What's up guys? Welcome back to Surf and Turf Travel. Uh, I've been hearing a lot of feedback from you guys on the photography tips on Instagram about HDR. So guess what we're talking today? So obviously the first question is what is high dynamic range? High dynamic range means that you're taking a scene that has super bright brights and super dark darks and you're combining those images together to create one uniform image with all the details that you want inside of that image. So a lot of times if you're going out and you're taking pictures of sunset or uh, you have super bright light coming in a window inside an indoor scene, you're going to need to use high dynamic range. The camera is only able to see 15 stops of light. Okay. And really the important thing to think of is that uh, your camera can only see a certain range of luminosity or light. And so if my scene includes a difference of 20 stops of light, it means I cannot capture detail everywhere inside the photo with one single exposure. Okay, so that's the most important thing about HDR is that it's the combination of images in order to create one uniform image with a lot of difference between light and dark, okay? We got that? Great. Okay, I'll show you an example based on a histogram, which I'm, I'm sure a lot of you are familiar with. If not, uh, I'll give you just a brief overview so you can see exactly what a histogram does for you. Okay, so let's take a look at this image here I took in Arizona. Uh, this was actually at uh, Antelope Canyon, so uh, really exciting to go shoot out there, but really challenging lighting conditions. Okay, so in this image here, what we can see, we can see a lot of nice blue, it was a nice blue sky, you know, the lights shining in down here, but we also see a lot of dark in here. So I, I think that the, the easy way for most people to do this is to up the shadows, which is actually already done in this image. So if I bring it back to how it was, I mean, you can see, it's just totally black, all right? And you can see here in the histogram, it's clipping. So when we look at the histogram, the histogram is gonna tell us, okay, here is how many pixels you have in the dark space, okay, progressively getting lighter and lighter up to total white. Now, if I wanted to take an image that was something like this one, so this was the original image before HDR, I can see that in Lightroom, if you hover over these little up arrows, or you see that they're lit up, you will be able to see whether your image is clipping, which is whites, or crushing, which is blacks, okay? In this case, both of them are. So what does that tell you? You need HDR. You need to combine images in order to get the full pixel data into that image and create something that is, I mean, a really a beautiful professional image. Uh, so in this case, I did do HDR. So when you have your camera, the way that you want to set up HDR is either through bracketing or you can do it manually. Okay, I prefer bracketing. There is bracketing settings on every camera for the last 10 years, okay? So you have bracketing on there. I'll tell you what bracketing is, first of all. Bracketing is the quick succession of shots at multiple exposures, okay? So you can define those different exposures on your camera through the bracketing settings. I like to set mine at 0.7 intervals, okay? So I will either do three shots or five shots depending on the dynamic range of the scene, okay? So again, dynamic range is defined by the difference between the lights and the darks, and so if it's a super 
high dynamic range. It means there's a lot of difference between the two and I probably need to do more shots than just three. So if, if you want to be safe, do five. A lot of cameras have up to nine. If you want to be super safe, you can do up to nine. That's fine. As long as in each of the photos uh, that you're taking, the combination will give you the full scene with recognizable pixel data. Okay. Anyways, let me show you an example of exactly how that works. Okay, so I have this picture in Antelope Canyon shooting right up to the sky. This is a really classic example. Um, I have this one where the uh, there's some blacks that are blown out. I can see kind of down here in the bottom area. And even if I was to try and use this data by bringing up the shadows, what I'm going to end up with is just a whole lot of noise. Like, uh, look at all this. You can see there's, there's, uh, I mean, there's crushed blacks, obviously, which is identified by these blue marks here, but there's also just a ton of noise. So the quality of the pixels themselves are bad already. So it's not even an image I want to work with. I want to use pixels that are quality pixels taken at the right exposure, which would be this image here. Okay. So this was my, my highly exposed image. And if I zoom in, you can see, oh man, there's just so much more beautiful data here that I can work with. So the process of being able to combine this photo with the darker image that reveals the sky is essentially HDR. So in Lightroom, it's very easy to do this. Like Lightroom is super smart, especially with an image like this where I don't have anything that's moving in the scene. I don't have to worry about ghosting and artifacting and things like that. I had uh, this one set up, uh... actually I take it back. This was not set up on a tripod. If I press I, I can see the information. This was taken at 1 60th of a second. This one was taken at 1 25th. Wow, I did a pretty good job hand holding this one uh, to create no camera blur. Um, but it looks like there's really no difference between the two. And so I can pretty easily go into HDR in Lightroom and combine these two images. So let me show you how you do it. So first you select the dark image that you want or the light image that you want and then vice versa. Okay. So the two images I want to combine are my dark one and my light one. Then I'm going to go up to uh, photo and then I'm going to go to photo merge and then I'm going to do HDR. You can also use the uh, control or command uh, H to do it if, if it's a quick key you want to use. Okay, so it's going to process that image here. Notice on the right side we have some options. Okay, so we have auto align, we have auto settings, we have create a stack, and then we have ghosting. So let's just take a moment to talk about what these things do. Okay, auto align is especially useful if you're doing handheld bracketing photography and you need them to auto align. Uh, the only issue with auto align is uh, sometimes uh, you'll see a little bit of artifacting or duplication if you're doing handheld, especially in moving scenes where you confuse Lightroom. Uh, so I, uh, but I always recommend using auto align anyways, just in case there was any sort of movement. In this case, there I'm I'm pretty positive that there wasn't much movement, and so I'm gonna I'm gonna keep it clicked on. Uh, auto settings. I usually don't do auto settings. The only time I'll do auto settings is if I just want to kind of see a preview of uh, what it looks like, you know, how many, how many darks do I have? How well did it combine the photo? Okay. In this case, auto settings, they look pretty good. It looks like I can do a lot of things with this photo. I'm going to uncheck it for now. Okay. Just so I can output a raw image. Uh, the last is create a stack. This is actually fairly new. It came out within the last eight months of Lightroom and uh, it's just a convenience. It creates a stack of the images so that you don't have a, a ton of images that you're looking through in your library space. 
Uh, I like to keep it on because then I know I did an HDR image uh, or, a, or a panorama image or whatever it is that I'm doing that allows me to create a stack. Uh, so I'm going to keep it on. And uh, okay, lastly, deghost. Deghost is a really, really tricky one that you have to play with quite a bit in order to get it right. Um, I'm not going to put on deghost in this one because the images were just about perfectly aligned. Uh, I don't want the AI within uh, Lightroom to try and figure out if there was any ghosting areas. Um, Deghosting is really good when you're taking a picture where there's slight movement in the scene. Okay, so if there's wind blowing and you're doing a landscape shot, that's a great time to use Deghost. Okay, it's also a great time to click on Deghost overlay so that you can see where it's doing the deghosting. Essentially, what Lightroom is doing is it's picking a part of the image that it's going to keep and then it discards the rest so that you don't get duplication. So if there's a, if there's a tree limb blowing right during your shot and it's slightly off on the two different photos or three different photos that you're trying to HDR, Lightroom is at least smart enough to know, hey, this is the same thing. We don't want to duplicate it in the image, so we will discard it. Make sure you have Deghost Overlay on though, so that you can see where it's trying to apply that. And then if you know that there's movement in certain areas, then you can either up the Deghost to a, let's say you're at a low and you can up it to a medium, or if it's doing too much and, and you think, hey, I just really need this area done, try and lower it down to a low, but play around with it. It can create some artifacting. It can create some, uh, some additional issues just technically with the photo. Um, so play around with it, see what works for you. In this case, I'm not gonna do any. I feel good about this image and I'm gonna process it. Okay, so we sped through that real quick. And uh, so now I'm left with the raw image that's in HDR format. Okay, so now I'm just gonna go through my regular editing process. Um, I, I generally don't use presets because there are so many unique things to each picture, but there are some standard things that I do, uh, especially with HDR. I wanna lower the highlights quite a bit. Let's just bring this into full and take out the information so that you can see it really well. Um, and then I'm gonna up my shadows. I'm gonna up them probably all the way to a hundred. Okay, let me zoom in just to see. Okay, this is looking a lot better compared to the first image that I was looking at. There was so much noise going on inside these little details that I wanted to capture uh, within the canyon that now it retained those details and it also got me that blue sky that I was looking for. So it's not just a completely white sky. Um, I think it is a little bit dark. So if I up the exposure, it will probably introduce a little bit of noise. In this case, uh, I'm just gonna take the noise because I wanna be able to see these really cool lines within the canyon. Um, and there you go, you can see that there's there's some noise in there, which will reduce with some denoiser. But denoise is actually gonna take away some of the details too. Uh, but I think overall that was pretty well zoomed in. If I zoom out a little bit, I can see a ton of those details. You can see that the, the light went almost to white again. So again, I can just take down the shadows a little bit where it looks fairly natural. We'll stick it around 69. I think that looks pretty good. Um, okay, so this image is now in HDR format. So uh, I can go through and I can do all sorts of creative stuff. I really think the highlights and the shadows are where you need to think technically about it. And then from there, you can start thinking creatively about it and how you wanna form that image. I'll just go back to the original photos that I was working with so we can compare what it would look like if I just took a single image. So let's take a look at the brighter image, okay? So here we have uh, a ton of clipping going on up in this region. So if I was to bring down the highlights, 
and then bring up the shadows, I can achieve a pretty similar effect. Now, if I zoom in, I can see that we're creating a ton of noise in the darks because I've just tried to stretch this image way too far. Okay, by doing HDR, I'm bringing in quality pixels into a single image and that's just gonna give me a lot more flexibility to work with. Uh, so all in all, this HDR image is the one that I'm gonna end up using if I wanna do any publishing with this image or I wanna to try to take it to stock photography or especially if I'm gonna print this image uh, because the quality is just overall been increased by the combination of good pixels between two images that exceeded the dynamic range of the camera. If you guys have questions about that, Go ahead and put them in the comments section. I'm more than happy to answer questions. Yes, cameras have different dynamic ranges, okay? The camera I'm using right now is a Sony and it has 15 stops of dynamic range. There are some that are slightly more and there are some that are quite a bit less depending on the age of your camera. So you may have to do uh, HDR or bracketing in cases where maybe I wouldn't have to do it because I do have full dynamic range. Let's actually take a look at a photo that is not going to require HDR. I think sometimes HDR is overused because there are cases where you just don't need it. All right, so let's take a look at this image real quick. I'm going to go to uh, my rated images because I had this one picked out to show. We'll go full screen. So here we go. Let's let's look at the histogram first on this. Okay, the I think that the most telling thing is that there's no clipping on either side. It's not blowing out the whites and it's not crushing the blacks. Okay, we have dynamic range in the image that contains all the pixels that we need for editing. So in this case, even if I start editing this photo, let's say I, I bring down the highlights and I'm, I'm bringing up the shadows, okay. That gives me more, more dynamic range already. Um, I can even bring up the whites. Uh, it's starting to clip there in the color space. Right there is good. One fun thing you can do, you can hold down option and you can actually see when it's starting to clip in certain areas, color and luminance. Uh, in this case, yeah, we'll bring it right up to the top. You can also do the same with blacks. I'm, I'm holding down option. I'm bringing those blacks down. Okay, now we can see the clipping coming through, excuse me, the, the, the crushing of the blacks. And uh, so I'm not gonna bring it down too much. Um, maybe slightly bring up texture because these hoodoos look so Frickin' cool that I want to see all the details of the hoodoos and who would not. Um, so that's looking pretty good. I'm not seeing a lot of a lot of noise. I'm zoomed in pretty good, uh, so I can see uh, maybe a little bit of um, uh, blurriness, which I'm gonna fix with just sharpening. And so I'm gonna scroll down to sharpen. It's already done a little bit. I'm gonna bring up the detail first. Radius, I'm just gonna play with a little bit. I'm not gonna bring that up too much, but I'm gonna bring up and then bring down sharpening just like I would do with focus. And that looks pretty good. Like That's really, really detailed. The colors look really, really nice. We can see around the edges that we have some darkness. Usually the first way that you want to fix that is through uh, uh, profile correction for your lens. So I'm going to put in profile correction. That did fix most of it, uh, but it also did uh, do some uh, blowing out of my whites. I'm going, to, I'm going to click remove chromatic aberration. We'll talk about that in a different episode. Um, so now I'm going to go back to my whites and I'm going to bring them down a little bit so they're not crushing. Okay, that is looking pretty good. Maybe up the contrast just slightly. That's about the last thing I do, that and exposure. 
I almost never touch these two actually because I can do so much with highlight shadows, whites, blacks, and then my, my tone curve. Uh, my tone curve can really do a lot with not much action. But there we go. This is an image where I didn't need to do HDR. So don't put yourself through extra work if you don't have to. Okay, if you have a camera that can take 15 stops of light difference and your scene is only 13 stops of light difference, then you don't need to do HDR. You can just do a single image. Now one thing to note is I'm shooting raw in every single one of these images. If you're shooting JPEG, you are losing dynamic range. So if you bought a camera that says, I can do 15 stops of dynamic range and you decide that you want to shoot in JPEG, you're going to lose three, four, maybe even five stops of dynamic range for those shots. Okay. Now the output of the image, yeah, it looks better like right off the bat, but I, I mean, if you really want to take your photography to the next level and you want to be a good photographer, then you need to shoot raw. You're going to capture the most quality pixels and the highest dynamic range in each photo that's going to give you that much more flexibility when you bring it into post-production. Okay, that is it guys. If, if you have more questions about HDR in the way that I've done it here through Lightroom, throw them in the comment section. I'm happy to answer any of those questions. If you like the video, like, subscribe, hit the bell icon, all the standard stuff. Uh, super appreciate you guys tuning in, especially if you stayed this long. And uh, check out the next episode if it's ready of HDR in Photoshop. If you don't want to do it this way, I actually do like the Photoshop method a little bit better. I feel like it creates a more realistic scene. But for starting out with HDR, this is a really good way to go about it. All right, guys, we will catch you next time.